Right, hello, greetings. How are you? I hope you're fine. And uh, do you remember this is the work I sent to you a couple of weeks ago? And I hope that you've worked through it. So as from today, I'm going to supply you short clips to explain parts of this handout I gave you, right? So trigonometry is a new topic to you. It's the first time you're doing it ever in your life. Okay, let me just uh, increase this fast quickly. Right, sorry about that. First time you're doing this topic ever, it's part of paper two called trigonometry. Now, there's just some examples where in life do we use trigonometry, like architectures use trigonometry, astronomers use trigonometry in geology, etc., etc. It's the practical application of trigonometry. Then, those are the topics we're going to do in, uh, in uh, grade 10. We're going to look at right angle triangles and Pythagoras. We're going to look at special angles, 0, 90, 45, 60, and 30. We're going to look at trig equations, solving 2D problems, use of the calculator, and of course, we're going to use the all four quadrants in the Cartesian plane. And then, of course, very important, in trigonometry, we use calculators, identities, and sketches when we solve trigonometry. Now, the word trigonometry comes from the Greek word trigonon, which means triangle, and metron, which means measure. So in other words, in trigonometry, we are going to deal with the measuring of triangles. The definition, trigonometry is a study of the relationship between the sides and angles of a triangle. So very important, we're going to look at triangles. We're going to study the relationship between the sides and the angles. Those are your important words. Trigonometry is a branch of mathematics with many applications and is used in engineering, navigation, surveying, architecture, astronomy, etc. In grade 10, you will learn about the properties and application of trigonometry in right-angled triangles. Only in grade 10. Right-angled triangles. Now there, here's your three basic approaches in trigonometry to solve problems. You're going to use a calculator, identities, so it's a calculator, identities, and of course, sketches, diagrams, and graphs. Those are the three methods. Now, in a right-angled triangle paper, like this one here, for instance, if you look at this angle here, I can call it theta. There's a Greek symbol, theta. So instead of degrees, I call it theta. Then you will notice that from Pythagoras, you remember, this is the hypotenuse. Then this is adjacent. Why? Because it is next to the angle, so it's adjacent. This one is opposite, because it is opposite to the angle. Is it clear? So adjacent is next to the angle, opposite is opposite to the angle, and of course the longer side is the hypotenuse. Right. Now there's three new names. Sine, cosine, and tangent. Try and remember those words. Sine, cosine, and tangent. Now, in trigonometry, it's good at finding a missing side or an angle in a triangle. The special functions, sine, cosine, and tangent, helps us to do that. Now, they are very simple. If you look at sine first, sine is defined we shorten as SIN. So the sine of theta is opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. And tangent is opposite over adjacent. We use the word so ka to. So sine means O for opposite, H for hypotenuse. Ka C for cosine, A for adjacent, A is for hypotenuse. Tau, O for opposite, and A for adjacent. So that is important. If I can just go back to my sketch quickly. So sine will be, take note, opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine will be 
adjacent over hypotenuse and tan will be opposite over the adjacent. Right, that is Right, hello grade tens and welcome to the second lesson in trigonometry. So that is where we stopped the last time if you remember. So Katal, Roman of sine, opposite of hypotenuse, cosine, adjacent of hypotenuse, tangent, opposite over the adjacent. Now today, this is the activity you were supposed to have done where you similar triangles. Now triangles are similar people if they have if their angles are equal, however, their sides are different. Look at these triangles here, for instance. I have triangle ABC, the big one. I have the small one here, AED, and I have AGF. All three of them share a fixed angle, 30. And you'll notice that if they are similar, the ratios will be the same. Just to prove that the sizes doesn't matter. So if you have done this activity for us, then you are supposed to measure BC and AC, and you get, if you simplify, you should get something like 0 0.5 more or less. Right, this is triangle ABC. If you take triangle AEB, this one here, but remember I'm talking about sine here, which is opposite of the high hypotenuse. So in triangle AED, this triangle here, sine is DE, over AD and this will also be 0, 0,5 if you measure it and in triangle AG AGF this one here AGF you have FG as opposite and you're going to have AF as the hypotenuse so in all three cases people you will discover they have the same value so they just prove that the length of the sides doesn't matter. The ratio will be the same. You can do the same with this one here. What is adjacent of the hypotenuse? Here, to remember, is cosine. So in triangle ABC, adjacent is AB, right, over AC. No, over A, AB over AC, adjacent over the hypotenuse. In triangle AED, the small one here, AE is adjacent and AD is hypotenuse and in triangle AGF right AG is adjacent and AF is hypotenuse and again if you measure all three you will get exactly the same value and then this one of the adjacent remember is 10 so for the big one 10 is opposite, which is BC, over AB, which is adjacent. In triangle AED, this one here, DE is opposite, and AE is adjacent, and then AE, sorry, and then in triangle AGE, this one here, FG is opposite, and AG is the adjacent. And you'll also notice here, that they are all equal. So that is the proof that the size of the size doesn't matter. Those three ratios, sine, cos, and tan, all of them will be equal. Okay, tan, you remember, this is what we've done in uh, the previous lesson. Now we're going to do some application. If we've got a sketch here, this is angle theta, that is 17, so it's the hypotenuse, if you remember. 15 is next to theta, so it's the adjacent, remember? And 8 is the opposite, so remember now? That is opposite, this is adjacent, that is opposite, and of course that is the high hypotenuse, so always remember that. So, sine of theta is therefore sine, you remember? Sine is opposite over the high hypotenuse so therefore 8 over 17 cosine of theta cosine remember is adjacent over hypotenuse so it's 15 over 17 and then you remember is opposite over the adjacent so therefore 8 over 15 is that clear cool second example look 
where is theta now? Theta is at the bottom. But remember, this is still the hypotenuse that didn't change. This is still the adjacent, and that is still the opposite. Is it clear, guys? So that didn't change. So let's see, sine, remember, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So therefore, 5 over 13. Cosine, you remember, adjacent over hypotenuse, so 12 over 13. And 10, opposite over adjacent, 5 over 12. So there you are. Not that bad. Can you see, guys? If you just remember, so kato, remember now, this is so opposite over hypotenuse. So kato ka is adjacent over hypotenuse, remember now, and 10 is, right, 10 is opposite over adjacent. So clear up. So kato. Please, you need to go and study that and memorize it. End of Let's first have a quick look at Pythagoras, which you've done before, but we're going to use Pythagoras a lot in trigonometry. So if you have your triangle ABC here, then of course you must remember that is A, right? Sorry, that is B, that is A, and that is C. That is A, B, and C. Then you always name the side opposite A, small a, also opposite C, small c, and opposite B, small b. Then according to Pythagoras, the square, or in a right angular triangle, the square on the hypotenuse is equal to the sum of the squares on the other two sides. So C squared is hypotenuse, and those are the other two sides. So C squared is A squared plus B squared. I'm sure we still remember this from the previous grades. Look at the, the example quickly. There I have my triangle, right? This is given as 5, that is 12, and we must find the value of C. So according to Pythagoras, C squared is A squared plus B squared, right? There you are. And of course, so it is then 5 squared plus 12 squared, which is, this is all calculatable, by the way. You can do it on the calculator. Or we can say 25 plus 144 is 169. And how do we get rid of the square? We find the square root of 169, which of course is 13. So there you are. There is 13. Just a quick revision to check. You still remember how Pythagoras works. Let's do the uh, activity quickly. So here we have, that is a hypotenuse, don't forget. That is the other two sides. So according to Pythagoras, the square on the hypotenuse is equal to the sum of the squares on the other two sides, isn't it? We will square the hypotenuse, and those are the other two sides. Right. So therefore, x squared is equal to 10 squared is 100, and 6 squared is 36. If I bring it over, I must subtract it, isn't it, guys? So therefore, x squared is 100 minus 36, which of course is how much, guys? It is 64. Yes, you're correct, right? It is 64. You can just double check on your calculator, right? And then, of course, if x squared is 64, then x is the square root of 64, which of course is 8. So there you are. x equals to 8. Do we still remember this, guys? Just one more example. X squared is now the hypotenuse. And then 10 squared plus 24 squared. Now I'm going to show you now how to do it on the calculator. Right? To save time. Because we don't have to do it all the time like this. So what I suggest is you can immediately do that. Right? Because this is going to save you a lot of time. Right, so on the calculator, guys, you will then do the following. Right, on the calculator, you will then have square root. Then you have your 10 squared, right, plus your 24 squared. So clear, guys? And then equals to, and you get your answer directly 26. So you don't have to waste time. So clear. 
So the calculator, of course, is allowed. Good. Right. Then the next I want to discuss with you quickly are the so-called reciprocal ratios. These are three new names. Cosec, sec, and cot. Now, cosec is linked to sine. So, cosec is 1 over sine. Sec is linked to cos. So, it is 1 over cos. And cot is linked to ten. So, it is 1 over 10. So, it's important that you must know this. Because we're going to use this in our next lesson. Right, hello, Greek tens. Right, this is video number five in trigonometry. Remember, yesterday we spoke about this in our in the previous video, where we used worked out the value of eight using Pythagoras, and this one, of course, was twenty-six using Pythagoras. Then we must so do sine, cos, and the and ten of each one. So the sine of theta will then be remember opposite over hypotenuse. So therefore six over ten. Cosine adjacent over hypotenuse. So it is eight over ten. And then the ten is opposite over adjacent. So therefore six over eight. Same with this drawing. Sine of theta, there's theta, opposite over hypotenuse, so therefore 10 over 26. Cosine adjacent over hypotenuse, so it's 24 over 26, and 10 is opposite over adjacent, so it is 10 over 24. So that completes then the video of yesterday. Today, and then of course we also spoke about the reciprocal functions cosec is 1 over sine sec is 1 over cos and cot of course is 1 over 10 I can just add here that also sine of theta is also 1 over the cosec of theta cosine of theta is also 1 over the sec of theta and 10 of theta is 1 over the cot of theta. So they also work in reverse. Just, just add it to your answers. It works in reverse. Let's look at the first worked example. If cos of theta is 3 fifths, write down the value of sec theta plus cot theta without using a calculator. And so without a calculator and leave your answer in third form. So where do we start? We use a diagram. That's very important. So first show where is theta. So you draw your right angular triangle. Theta, now remember cosine is 3 over 5. So cosine is adjacent over the hypotenuse. So 3 over 5. And we can find this by using Pythagoras. Remember, 5 squared minus 3 squared gives you the square root of 16, which is 4. So therefore that is 4. So now I can find the value of sec theta plus cot theta. Remember what is sec theta, people? Sec theta is the opposite of cos. Ne? Sec is the opposite of cos. So don't forget. So if the cos is adjacent over hypotenuse, then sec will be hypotenuse over adjacent. So that explains the 5 over 3. So there, guys. Cot goes with 10, so they are inverses, cot and 10. So if the 10 is 4 over 3, then cot will be 3 over 4. Is it clear, guys? And then, of course, the LCM is 12, so therefore the answer is 29 over 12. Cool. Let's look at our uh, first activity. If sine theta is 4 fifths, find the value of cot theta minus 10 theta without using a calculator. So let's do it. So what's the, what's the step number one? Draw a right angular triangle and show where is theta. Sine, you remember, is 4 over 5. So sine is opposite over hypotenuse. I must find this side using Pythagoras. So it will be 25 minus 16 and the square root. You agree, guys? Remember, it is 5 squared 
minus 4 squared, if you remember. And 25 minus 16 is 9, so therefore 3. So this value here is 3. So now we can find cot theta. Remember, cot goes with 10, right? If 10 is opposite over adjacent, then cot will be adjacent over opposite. So 3 over 4. Cot is 3 over 4. 10 is, of course, 4 over 3. Ah, so remember, cot is the opposite of 10. So a 3 quarter minus 4 thirds. 4 and 3, the LCM is 12. 4 into 12, 3 times 3 is 9. 3 into 12, 4, 4 times 4 is 16. So therefore, the answer is negative 7 over 12. Remember, no calculator. And there you are, guys. I hope you've enjoyed this lesson. End of the video.